Hi again, it's Scarlett with Sequestered Chef, and this week we're gonna get out of my kitchen and roam around Middle Georgia a little bit. I had one plan for this video, and, it, and thanks to social distancing, it changed into something else, but I think you'll still enjoy it. I was gonna take a tour of all the fruit and vegetable stands around Middle Georgia, but um, quickly social distancing became a problem and I only made it to one, but it's a great one because it's right down the street from the Wellness Center. So there's no excuse as the gym starts to open back up why you can't stop by there um, and visit Trey Brown and his niece Lanier and pick up some great fruits and vegetables. Um, in the video, he's gonna tell us where he gets his produce and what his hours are and he would love for you to stop by and visit him. So then I changed directions and decided to go visit gardens and I found a variety of gardens um, people just do whatever way they can as you know I have a little tiny deck garden that I grow herbs on so that works for me um, other people have like one of the gardens that we visit is my sister's and a couple of years ago they had a tornado touch down and take out most of their trees so in the spirit of reusing items she they've had the lumber or the wood um, the, the stumps ground and the lumber cut up into wood chips and so she uses her garden or she uses the wood chips in her garden to keep the moisture in and she just planted a few of her favorite things and then we visited um, a surprise guest somebody that everybody at the wellness center will know and she uses every inch of her yard for um, gardening and then lastly we visit a huge garden um, that's just a hidden gem right here in Macon, Georgia. So, um, a friend of mine has, and he was kind enough to take us on a tour and give us some tips on if you really want to get bigger skill gardening. But the one thing that I learned was you don't have to make a rectangle, and you can plant. Every, there's so many different ways, and you can just experiment. It's not too late for you to get a garden in, so maybe you can take some of these ideas and use them for your own and. I would love for you to post a picture of what you came up with to my Fitter by Far page. Um, if you have any other questions about um, some of the fruit stands around that I went and visited. Like I said, I, I didn't get to film because of the social distancing, but um, I can certainly give you, tell you more about what I did see if you have specific questions. So I hope you enjoy our little garden tour. So here we are inside of the Northside Fruit Stand, and you can see they're, today is opening day and they're starting to get all their produce out. And I'm gonna talk to Trey, and he's gonna give you a little bit of the history and tell you where some of these crops come from. Hey Trey. Hello, I'm Trey Brown. Uh, I've had this fruit stand for 15 years, and it's been here for 18 years. We took it over in 2006. And uh, most of the peaches, well this year all of the peaches will come from Dickey Farms in Musella. The tomatoes are kind of what we're famous for, and they're coming right now out of Immokalee, Florida. And we have a guy who follows the crop, who picks up the peaches, I mean the uh, tomatoes out of the field so they never go to the pack and shed and get gas with any preservatives. It's why we have better tomatoes in the grocery store. And he starts off in central Florida and follows the crop all the way north. So it'll come through Georgia starting in probably 10 days or two weeks and then he'll follow it all the way up to Tennessee to the mountain tomatoes at the okay. end of the summer. And, but most of your crops that you sell here are Georgia grown? Yeah, yeah they're either from Georgia or from as close to Georgia as we can get them from Florida. Um, but that's only the tomatoes. Everything else is going to be Georgia. Okay, and then I guess the peanuts you're getting ready to boil over there as well? Yeah, we got some peanuts warmed. Those are already finished and they're warmed up. So you have a Facebook page called yep. Northside Fruit Stand, so we, people can go and see what you have every We do, week. and we have a website that's northsidefruitstand.com, and we don't have it entirely worked out yet, but you'll be able to pay online and order online and be able to pick up, so we'll do curbside. So if you all pay for it, all we got to do is give it to you. And then you have two other locations, right? Yep, we have two other locations. One is at exit 181 on Rumble Road in Forsyth, and the other one is at exit 185. And for site. Okay. Next, next and what are your hours going to be? Uh, nine to seven, Monday through Saturday, and eleven to seven on Sunday. Okay, great. And what would you recommend people stopping and picking up today? Uh, the tomatoes are, are kind of what we're known for, and the peaches you can't go wrong with peaches out of uh, Dickies. So. All right. And what about? I don't even know what these are. Green plums. Green plums. Now, what would somebody do with green plums? Uh, either love them or hate them. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't keep them, but uh, I don't know how people do them. 
And then you have Oh Yum Honey yeah. and Peach Jam, yeah. Apple Butter, and Hot Sauce. So you can get all kinds of goodness for the week right, right here. Yeah. You don't have to go into a grocery store. One stop shop. Well, thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank and you. I hope that we can send you some business. Yeah, come see us. So right. we saw the farm stand, and now we're going to see where it all comes from and how you start a garden and we're gonna get some ideas from different friends about how they set up their gardens and get some clues on how to make your own garden it's still time you can get a garden in hey this garden was um, done by my sister and my brother-in-law and they are growing just their favorite items and so I'm gonna let her tell you a little bit about what she's done we have six big boy tomato plants and we have put the fabric down so the weeds won't grow and then we mulched it heavily to keep the water in the ground so that we won't have to water them too much. They're coming along very well. We'll put tomato cages on them very soon so they won't get too big. And then we have six beds of cucumbers. And each one has four seeds in it. And we have a fence in the middle so that when they start running, they can run up the fence and the cucumbers will hang there and we'll pick them from there. And they won't have dirt all over them. Um, hopefully we'll be getting some salad stuff from it in the near future and um, be eating healthy. So you got these tomatoes at a, a store. Yeah. And how long and from that size until they probably make some tomatoes? Oh, it will be late June, okay. first of July maybe. And then you can get lots of tomatoes off of just one Ho tomato plant? Yes. Hopefully we'll, we fertilized it well. Um, we will fertilize it along. Uh, we're going to put a couple of tums around them so we won't have blossom and rot. And we'll get a lot of tomatoes. And then you planted the cucumbers from seeds. So yes. how long how long has it been and when will they start popping out, you think? They've been in the ground less than a week. We were a little bit late start. We didn't decide until late that we wanted a garden. And with things the way they are and supplies limited, we decided we might need a few eating things. Okay. So they should be coming up any day now and um, start growing toward that fence where we'll have some cucumbers. Okay, well in the center I have found another garden for us to look at and get some ideas if you're just starting out making a garden and you don't really know what to do. But I have a fabulous surprise for you and uh, everybody loves her at the wellness center and I'm going to show you who it is. Surprise! It's Paula! And Paula is going to give us a tour of her garden, and we actually have a little mascot with us. Come here, baby. Her little chicken. There's five of them, Come here, and baby. they help her get the bugs and the little weeds out of her garden. Yes, they do. All right, Paula, show us some stuff. So here I have some cucumber. So, and you see that I have all kinds of different stuff. This is another cucumber growing and this is supposed to be like a lemon cucumber. You're gonna have to come back to see how they look like. I will, I will. Because they're different. And those are potato plants all from the skin. So when the, the skin is already coming a little bud, I just cut it off and so I you plant. you cut the eyes out and plant Yes, okay. and just plant it. You just don't need this like waste a potato. Just the skin will grow to be a potato. And you don't have to start it in water. You no. just put it in the ground. Nope, just put it in the ground and they will, they will sprout. Those are some pumpkin plants that Annabella just tossed it because she does her compost and she just throw it in the ground. So now you got pumpkins for the fall. Yes. Collard greens, zucchinis. And tell me again why you plant them like alternating? S some bugs don't like this, some bugs don't like that. So it's just like so it's having, a natural way yes, for pesticides. Yes. Awesome. And you see I have some of the flowers. The marigolds. Marigolds because a lot of bugs don't like them. So and it's on my strawberry little. Garden. Now this stra I know it's strawberry season's almost over, but since these have flowers, will they do, are you gonna get a few more strawberries? They will still gonna give more strawberries. I already collect a lot of strawberries this year. Okay, and these I don't think those are some squash blooms. Do they just bloom in the morning? They bloom in and the morning. They close. Okay. Yes. So tomorrow they'll be big and yellow again. So yes, this is a male flower. Okay. And this is a female flower. So the from here will come a squash. From here is just blooms. Oh, I didn't know that. So that's the difference. The long ones are mm -hmm. the male. The short ones is the one that's, that's actually going to make come. the squash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, here's our little buddy again. <laughs> I have to watch my step. And I have some uh, tomatoes there. So see, you ask if that's gonna come more strawberries. So there you go. Do we have you one? You can see some flowers and little baby strawberries. See? Oh yeah, look at that. So yeah. you're gonna continue on with some strawberries. Yes. Is I guess eventually it gets too hot. Yes. So that's... And they, they don't come back anymore. Okay. They just stay like that and next year, the strawberry is actually a perennial plant. So they'll come back every year. Oh, so you don't have to replant those. You don't have those. to replant them. Okay. No. Now, how many years have you been growing strawberries? Five years. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and those are also uh, green onions from the rest of that I, I got from the grocery store. And you just, I just plant them. Yes, and they, they okay. came back. All right. Oh, there's the bell pepper. I mean, a banana pepper. Banana peppers. Now, did yes. you start those from seed or that was a store bought? That was store bought. Okay. Yeah. And those celeries was just the little roots from just, what you bought in the store. What I bought and in the you store. Planted it. Mm -hmm. And they regrow. They actually are perennial. Okay. The rest of my American. <laughs> tell, tell us what that is. This is a uh, romaine lettuce. <laughs> and where? What did it start? From the rest of the. the Roman lettuce. At the grocery store. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have our little worker over here. Yes. Eating bugs. all the bugs. And look, he found a strawberry. He's actually. Oh, eating he's a eating a strawberry, not a bug. Mm -hmm. well, here comes another one to help. <laughs> <laughs> and this one also is a, a carrot from the rest of one carrot. Okay. So you don't buy very many seeds or no. or go to the hardware store and get no. plants. You just use just what you buy at the grocery This store. is garlic. Just one clove of garlic, and probably in three months I should have a whole head of. Okay. Yeah. And then what? I see some little tomatoes there. Cherry tomatoes. Okay. And you've got different kinds of tomatoes growing. Yes. These are. Did you say beef, beef steak? steak? Okay. Mm-hmm. Now this those do not come steak. back year after year. No. You buy those at the store. Yes. As plant, little or small plants. Or you plant from your seeds that you okay. got from your tomatoes. All right. Let's go over here and see what you got. Eggplants in here, eggplants and some corn. Oh, that's so cute. Look at that corn. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And they actually grow so fast. Those are start from the seed. And how long ago did you plant those? Uh, about two, two weeks ago. Oh, that's some good growth for two yeah. weeks. They are pretty fast. Here's supposed to be some green beans, but it's still not coming yet. <laughs> okay, you just planted those. Yes, yeah, I just planted three days ago. But the peas are already coming, and I also planted at the same time, and you can see the little peas and coming. And you put this fence here so they can climb. Yeah. And keep mm -hmm. them off the dirt. Okay. And here has some soy, because my daughter's vegan. Tell us what comes from a soy plant. Uh, the mummies! <laughs> They're delicious! <laughs> you are the only person I know that grows edamame. <laughs> And over there, at the, as some of you know, at the wellness center, we we're uh, holding a daycare center and we started to have little plants. I, I taught the kids how to do little bean stalks from the little bean that you get at the store. So that's what we did. And that was a, our Earth Day project. And I have mine growing right here. So this was my bean stock that I got on so Earth Day. So that was near the end of April. So that's some good growth yeah. already. And this one is chickpeas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely coming back to check those. And what is this growing on the fence? Those are um, muscadine. Oh, those are I good. have a lot of muscadine now what, in here. Do you do anything particular with those when they... I just make, eat them. You just eat them. You don't make jelly. So, Me and my chickens. <laughs> my mom made muscadine jelly. That's why I was asking. Mm. I need to learn. I want to have some muscadine wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do that. <laughs> and we'll come back and watch the process. I don't know how. Somebody needs to teach me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this was the vegetable and fruit part. And we're going to walk over to the other side and you can More show fruits? us some of your fruit trees. Yes. All, All right. right. So this is some blueberries. And this one actually, when I moved here five years ago, was already here. Oh, okay. So how long till these little blueberries are ready? It's probably gonna be like another month or so. So you don't have to wait till the fall? No. They're summer The blueberries fruit. will keep coming and they're like 
slowly you can get some in one day, get another one another Okay, so day. it just keeps on producing. This is a little yes. key lime tree. And this one is producing every year, does produce. For some reason, the climbs doesn't like as much Georgia climb. Okay. So I will have some and then that's it. I so is like, it too cool here or it's not It's not tropical enough? I don't think it's tropical enough in okay. here. So it doesn't... But you do get a few. Yes, I get okay. a few. Yeah. And this is a fig tree. All right. You can I see there's it. lots there's of some. figs on it. And figs are good. You can use the fig leaves to make like arabic dishes and they're oh, delicious right. yes now when will the figs mature those are probably gonna take about like two months to be ready okay yeah all right i have some grapes those are like those white grapes what you go oh you go you guys call green grapes in here <laughs> <laughs> right yes and this is my persimmon. Yay. See, look how beautiful my it persimmon is. Beautiful. Okay, I grew up with a persimmon tree and we never ate them because we thought they were terribly bitter. No. So tell me the truth about look, persimmons. Look, this is a persimmon, but it's still a baby. So you need to mm -hmm. wait until it grows like this big mm -hmm. and it's going to look like a tomato. Okay. Just like a tomato and it's like And that's orange. when you eat it. That's when you eat so they are only going to be good like in the end of October, November. Okay. So it's a long process. It was a very long process. Those kind of fruits. And now what? They're we, Asian. Do you just eat them as a snack or do you cook with them? Some people cook, but you really eat as a fruit. Mm -hmm. yes. right. We have another guest here. Why don't you want us to tell who your surprise guest is? Yes. So this is my friend, Maria de la Sierra. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And tell us a little bit about your little secret that you have about gardening. I have a secret. Um, my secret is that I'm the president of the Vineville Garden Club, one of the old, actually the oldest garden club in Macon. Um, we have a membership body of about 50 ladies, ranging in ages from mid-30s well into their 80s. Oh, and wow. they're all very active gardeners. Okay. We also, uh, we get together once a month and talk about uh, horticulture and gardening, and we also do gardening projects for the community. Okay. So it's really fun, yeah. We get together and we clean up the cemeteries and we do a little planting. We also do, we're going to start a program now um, with a geriatric group in Warner Robins um, as soon as this whole thing kind of calms down Pen to me <laughs> um, and so we're gonna go out there yeah a couple times a month and and start a program with them uh, they have some people that are while while they're uh, in the in the nursing home they're still very active and they want a garden so I think that's a great way for us to interface um, absolutely yeah as well so my little secret is that yeah Vineville Garden Club has a lot going on, much more than the community knows. Absolutely. So we would love for you to come and join us. Yeah, there, there are many garden clubs. Um, and the Federated is, uh, the home is 730 College Street, the Neil Reed home. And we, we all meet different days, different times. So there's a garden club to suit everybody's needs. Okay. Yeah. And so the membership is, you're always having membership? Oh, yes. Open or, membership. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so you just pick one of the clubs that's closest to your community or wherever your friends are at because I guarantee you, you know someone that's in a garden club. Cool. So, yeah. Okay, well in the show notes to this video, I'll put the contact information and if anybody's interested, they can reach out and find a club near them. You bet, it's a great club. Thank you. Okay, I have found a fabulous garden hidden in Macon. You would not believe how much stuff has grown here. And the owner of this garden is Pat Pritchard. Hey. So I want you to just give us a tour. Um, sure. You started out, you have this little bear patch you told me because you just harvested. We just dug up our potatoes. And those, yeah. that's these over and here. There's, we've got red potatoes and yellow potatoes. And you just, and so they grew all winter. No, well, no, they, we planted them in, uh, in March. Yeah, so oh, so that was a quick an, crop. Potatoes are an early spring crop. Okay. Uh, you can actually grow them in the fall here. <clears throat> you have to be careful. Uh, but if you plant them in September, you can get a crop. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, that's I like potatoes, so that's a good idea. Oh, they're delicious. All right, well, let's, um, let's see. I believe this was some, it's like lettuce or spinach, but tell me about this. It's actually, uh, it's called sorrel, and uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's actually, it's a European plant. We have sorrel that grows here, but most people call it shamrock. Uh, so any shamrock, I was looking around, it grows wild everywhere. Here's some. So this is... This is oh shame. yeah, we see that everywhere. Right, and it, but it's a sorrel, and if you taste this, it's a delightful lemony taste, and that has exactly the same taste. So oh. you can cook it, uh, it makes a great soup if you mix it with potatoes, uh, but you can also just chop it up and put it in the salad. So that that we see in our yard is edible? Oh yeah, completely okay, edible. How about that? Yep, it is. Okay, and then um, tell me about the onions. I believe you said those are about ready. Uh, the, the first little onions you see are just white onions that we'll be harvesting soon. <clears throat> the onions in the background with the funny things on the top are called Egyptian walking onions. And <clears throat> they, they, they make, let me go pick something, I'll bring it back here. So you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, on the top of each onion, another onion grows. Oh. But not only that, on the, on the top of the little onion that grows on this, another onion grows. <laughs> so it's like an onion on top of an onion on top of an onion. And the reason they call them, and that's, this is what you want to eat. It, this is not strong. It's, it's really pretty. So you want to eat the top onion? Yeah, and it's okay. a great thing to put in a salad because it's really pretty and it's a fairly mild taste. Okay. You can use the big onions for cooking, uh, but they call them walking onions because they get heavy with this and the stalk falls, falls over like that mm -hmm. and those will sprout. Oh. And so they keep moving. How about that? You know, so they'll around. take over eventually. They'll, they will take over. They so will. when did you plant these right here? Leslie planted them... Uh, let's see. I think in March. Okay, so and again, just, another pretty fast crop. Yeah, and they weren't seeds. You you mostly plant onions from what's called slips. Mm -hmm. So they're just the little skinny baby onion that look sort of sort of like these, which are actually leeks. Oh yeah. But when they're young, that's what they look that's like. That's what they start. Okay. Right. All right. Okay, so we are looking at a corn patch, but it's not just any old corn patch. Uh, I want Pat to tell us exactly why he's grown it the way he has and what kind of produce comes out of it. Hey, so uh, I've got my corn planted in hills, which is a traditional way that the native people of this country planted it, that they would cultivate a hill and they put in stuff to enrich the corn they would plant the corn and then we'd plant beans around the corn to, to fertilize the corn and to climb up the corn stalks and then they would plant pumpkins at the base of the hills and that's what I'm doing. It's called the three sisters method and so I haven't got my pumpkins planted yet. I'm going to plant them in about a week. So you said the, the beans are scarlet runners. Scarlet runner beans. And then tell, tell me again the name of the corn. So the corn <clears throat> is a very... Uh, it's incredible um, what they call open pollinated. That is, it's a, it's a native corn that's been, um, it, it has been changed through seed selection, but it's called glass gem, G-E-M. And if you just, you may have seen pictures, but if you look on the internet, you just can't believe it's actually corn. It's, it is, the kernels are iridescent, and every color of the rainbow. Uh, and what I do is I grow the corn uh, till it's hard, and then I harvest it, and I dry it out, and I grind it up and make cornmeal and make cornbread out of it. So that is that's, awesome. That's, and well, then the pumpkins you were telling me about, they will stay on the shelf for a year, so yeah, we, they provide food all year. So tell us about correct. that a little. It's called a Seminole pumpkin uh, because it was first actually documented by DeSoto when he was coming up through Florida in the 16th century and he uh, saw this particular pumpkin that was being grown by the Indians, the native people in North Florida and Georgia and this is the pumpkin that those uh, first agriculturists grew. 
So, and so how do you, you just cut them open and? Well, there's, you can do anything, you can make a pie. You can, our favorite way, there's, they're a small pumpkin. So our favorite way of preparing it is to cut the top off, hollow it out, take the pulp and seeds out, cook a spicy rice and fill the cavity with rice, put the top back on, bake it in the oven for an hour at 400, and it's like this beautiful loaf. The, the, the spicy rice, the flavor's gone into the sweet pumpkin, and it's just delicious. But you can slice it, you can make pumpkin fries, you can make pumpkin pie, you can do anything you want. But any, any other pumpkin or winter squash, and the taste is better than butternut squash. Oh wow, it's I'm definitely really coming back to try that. Yeah. <laughs> Have it. You can either go get the produce already grown right down the street after you work out, or you can see if you have a green thumb and try planting as well. Um, I hope that you got some good tips and I'll see you next week. Thank you.